for the interruption, for the big interruption. <laughs> I am really sorry. All right. Uh, let's go back to the point that we were talking. I <coughs> we come back to this idea that if I consider the motion of a zero-dimensional object as the zero-dimensional object which is a point particle as it moves it traces a one-dimensional curve right now I want to consider a one-dimensional object which is a string now as it moves this is just to differentiate that this is not the string this is just some imaginary something this is this is so a string is moving I mean on this path let us say the ends are moving so that means this is going to generate a two-dimensional surface and this surface would be an open seat just like this okay if my open string is here and as it moves it's going to create a surface supposing my I have a closed string which is a loop and now it travels, it propagates, as it propagates it will sweep out a tube. Okay, this is also a bird seat. So the bird seat could be an open seat like this, need not be rectangular in shape, of any shape, okay, of any shape. So when an open string propagates, it sweeps out a bird seat like that. And if a closed string with no free ends, as it propagates, it seeps out a tube. And what is the meaning of this, this closed loop or closed string propagating? It means that it evolves in time. So we want to consider the evolution of this object with time. Okay, tau is along this and the spatial extension is sigma. Okay, and this is the evolution with respect to time. And therefore, all the actions that we were writing or considering for relativistic point particles, the zero dimensional objects, they would now have to be extended. To accommodate the propagation of the one dimensional objects. So we can introduce now we had earlier we had here only tau but now when this propagates I have tau and sigma because this is a one dimensional object this is my string it is propagating and it shapes out a word seat. This is like this or a closed string is propagating and shaping out a tube like this. So this is the word seat. Therefore, here also I need two parameters tau and sigma. So these this was parameterizing my word line. This these two coordinates together are going to parameterize my word set. So I could say let sigma alpha, which is sigma zero, sigma one. Let me call that these are the coordinates that parameterize the verse. So these sigma alpha are the bird seat coordinates 
all the parameters that parameterize the surface which I obtain when my one dimensional object propagates. Is it also possible that they change the topology during propagation? Or might even be elongated or something? Or are they always one plank length long exactly? Oh, uh, well, I think this is not important that the length of the string should remain constant. We are talking here about the Planckian length scale. So the, the string is roughly of the order of 10 to the power minus 33 centimeters. And eventually when we write the action, the action is a definite integral. So like when we, we write the action as, and when we, when we integrate it over d tau d sigma, let us say for example, and uh, d tau d sigma no i shouldn't write it like this in that case i would i would i would write it as minus because that is what i was writing for my zero dimensional object now let me write it like this which we would just arrive at as an extension of our earlier consideration so what you are saying what we do is we make it d sigma let us say 0 to l and d tau tau and this is so when you write down the action you are integrating from some initial time tau i to final time tau f and you are integrating over some the spatial coordinate sigma also from some 0 to some arbitrary length L, which is the string length, okay? So, uh, this should not really matter how the, it, it can, so uh, the, your point is, supposing here it is like this, and as it propagates, it, it, let us say it contracts kind of this, or it expands like this, this is immaterial, okay? At, at different points, that is what you mean, right? So that is your point. So I think this would not be irrelevant. This would not be relevant. So this, this is on the propagation of this closed string along the time tau, and this absolutely no problem because eventually we are going. <coughs> uh, they, I mean, each these coordinates are not free kind of coordinates. We are going to this g alpha beta would be a function of these things. So. Eventually, we are going to integrate them over all lengths, over all times. That is what we were doing in classical mechanics. That is what we were doing in field theory. Okay? So, even though in field theory, supposing you write the action without saying, if you write the action of a So this is the action of a real scalar field theory, right? I just written the action of a real scalar field theory in four dimensions. So you see, without being mentioned, the integrations are over entire space. D four x, for example, is my or over entire space and when you integrate it so your x would be from some initial time dy to some final time tf dt and similarly over all space so actually uh, minus infinity to plus infinity so or I could I could call them in general that uh, uh, infinite space time boundary and therefore 
Also, when you demand that the action, the, the variation of the action vanishes, this also uh, goes without saying that these fields vanish at the infinite space time boundary, both space as well as time boundaries. Okay? So, the same is true here. Here also, the same is true. And therefore, so as it propagates, you are very right. It need not remain the same. It can keep changing. Okay? And the same is also true for this. Same is also true for this. Okay? And we have, at the beginning, we have also explained that these different shapes, uh, one could also say that the sizes, they really do not matter. Shapes and sizes of these open and closed strings, I mean, even if they are of the order of 10 to the power minus 30 very centimeters, does not matter. So they are shapes and sizes because as long as uh, one can deform them topologically to the same equivalent diagrams, they are all the same. Okay. So is this now okay? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, can a, um, an open string also become closed during propagation? Or oh, actually, open? actually, what happens? Actually, what happens? The very good, very good question. Actually, what happens? A an open string, the propagation of an open string is always associated with a closed string. You see, a propagating open string is a gravitating object. And a, a closed string is, of course, also always a gravitating object. A closed string is always a gravitating object. So, what happens, Sara? Then, supposing I should draw a straight line. Okay. So, so this is an open string. Okay. And as it moves, so. At different times, at different eigen times, So, as the open string moves, as the open string propagates, so this is a propagating open string, and when it open string propagates, it can keep deforming itself to different shapes, like this or like this, that maybe a loop is formed of any shape, okay, it need, need not be a circle, it could be any closed Curve. So it becomes a closed curve and eventually it is detached from the open string. So a open string can always split into an open string plus a closed string. Alright? And in the case of open string, it is a gravitating object only when the string is propagating. Of course, we are not considering static strings. So we are considering uh, uh, propagating strings. So propagating open string is a gravitating object. And a closed string is also of course always a gravitating object. So when it, as it moves, as it propagates in time, in the eigen time, it can split into an open string and a closed string. And the vice and vice versa. And vice versa. Okay, this can also happen. That, so, so this diagram is not, it holds true in both directions. Alright? So, <clears throat> we want to attack and understand this idea from several points of view. This is very good. And
Now, let us see what we, how we want to, to extend this idea. So, one thing we have said is that uh, we can, we can, uh, we can generalize the idea of zero dimensional objects to one dimensional objects. Okay, and for this we introduce the parameter sigma alpha, sigma zero, sigma one, which is equal to tau and sigma. Okay. So we could write them together as sigma alpha. So these are really the world sheet coordinates. They are They are world sheet coordinates. What are they doing for us? They are parameterizing the world sheet. Just an analogy with the parameterization of a word line, which was parameterized just by the eigentime tau. Here we not only have eigentime tau, but we also have a spatial dimension sigma. So our string is being parameterized by these two coordinates. We say that okay, they are the coordinates of the string. Uh, or the word sheet coordinates because we are going to have two spaces okay so now if we introduce some fields I would explain this in various ways okay chi uh, x mu and let me write x mu is a function of sigma alpha this means x mu is a function of tau and sigma okay so now these are I call them as string coordinates. These are string coordinates. What are they doing for us? What are these x mu doing for us? And what they really are? They are going to, to map the word sheet onto the space time. You see? x mu of tau it makes a word line on to the target space. Correct? That's what we consider for the relativistic point particle. Now, now we have x mu of tau and sigma and this would map or Embed map map the bird sheet onto the target space. You see, so it's a it's a very very rational generalization of the conventional relativistic quantum field theory which describes zero dimensional point particles. It's a very logistic uh, generalization. So, I, because I, I introduced, uh, for representing, let us say, my bosonic fields, I, I will just explain to you how, which are zero dimensional in my conventional field theory, I want to re represent my bosons as one dimensional objects. Similarly, I will do the, for the fermions, when I talk about the Super strings. Okay. So, and then, so this is going to map the bird sheet onto the space time manifold. Okay. Or this, so this represents the embedding of the bird line onto the space time manifold. Is this alright? Now, let me, let me give you an idea of the extension of the conventional field theory to the string theory action. So, how do I do it. I will come back to some basics a little bit later. Let me 
Yes. Let me write down the accent or the or just let me just write down the okay. I, I want to consider a two-dimensional real scalar field theory. Okay. Two-dimensional real scalar field theory. So what, what would I do? I would write the Xn as D2x. Okay. It's a two-dimensional field theory. And I would write one half of d mu phi d mu phi minus one half l square phi square okay now let me for simplicity let me not consider the mass term let me say it's a massless scalar field okay so i have a massless scalar field and by two dimensions i mean phi is a function of phi x mu this is phi which is a function of t and x it's in two dimensions so it's not a four dimensional field theory for a four dimensional field theory this x would be a vector x with three components x1 x2 x3 they could be either in cartesian coordinates or in r theta phi or in cylindrical coordinates as you wish okay so this phi is a function of x mu this x mu is not to be confused with our string coordinates okay this is little x mu from some Minkowski space. Okay. X mu is just going to spend the Minkowski space. Okay. But in two dimensions for the time being. Okay. But I want to generalize it to so so this I consider massless and this is okay. Now uh, instead of This is my conventionally I was writing d mu d mu. Let me just write it d alpha of phi, d alpha of phi, and let me draw the mass term. Okay, so this is massless scalar field. This is uh, some alpha alpha, or not even alpha. Let me call it a and a and a. Okay, not to be confused with our mu and alphas okay, of the string theory. Is some a okay? So where of course the a would be and so on. All right. So this is my kinetic energy term in the axon for the two-dimensional real scalar massless field. All right. Now I want to say that okay, in the first place I want to write it as dqx one half and I want to say hab, I want to introduce a metric hab and uh, I want to introduce a square root of minus h and I want to have H A B times del A of phi, which is a function of T and or if you like I can write tau and sigma or let me let me leave it without arguments. Del A of phi it's a it's a it's a two-dimensional field del A of phi and del v of phi so because i have put h a v here okay this is my metric and my metric is defined with the metric h a v has the signature minus 1 plus one. So if I have the signature of my matrix H minus 1 plus 1, then I would have this square root of minus H here. This would be positive, okay? Minus H would be positive as usual. This H would be determinant of H alpha beta. All 
right? Uh, yes, I, I, I don't want to make any mistakes, so this is fine. And 